Hello, welcome to Turtle Rock, GBR2 vs 2. I'll be commentating this game since I don't play Turtle Rock anymore. The teams are Granty, Undead, and Albert Einstein, human. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, Undead, and Orcs90 as the human. So, basically a mirror match is what you're seeing now. We've got our Albert as his human up the top here. Don't know what his peasants are doing. What the hell are they doing? And Granty with his undead, and then the orcs with his human over here. It is a true mirror match, isn't it? And few, few, few is the red undead at the bottom. So we can assume that Albert and Granty are going to do some sort of lame strategy, some sort of rush, I imagine, or tier two rush. But I'd like to see how the builds differ between the players. Albert's probably going to do the very same thing he pretty much does every other game. So you can pretty much be safe to say that I can don't have to keep looking at his base to wonder what it is he's doing. You don't need map hack versus Albert. You know exactly what he's doing at all times. Orcs 90. Not choosing for the traditional block off your base build. I assume an arcane tower might be sitting here maybe. Still going for the altar and racks though, as you do. And it looks like FU has the Acolyte Scout. So he's chosen to get that sick Acolyte. Sick Acolyte. To have a look and see what it is that Granty and Albert are going to be doing. Graveyard. Built a little later. So maybe a transition into Fiends. Maybe. Or just a way to use gold. But for the moment, definitely ghouls. We can assume that Albert's going to be creeping this orange spot at the top here with a few militia and his Archmage and a footman. Altar almost finished for Granty. Kind of late, but I think it's just the way it goes. It looks like a fiend bill because of the graveyard being up, but I, he doesn't normally go fiends, so it depends what comes out here. It looks like fiends. It is fiends. I was going to say, it would be a bit odd if it wasn't. So there's a few militia. Albert's actually going to creep this bit first, actually. I suppose it's on the way. You can take it out quick enough. I don't think there's any particular preference. I wouldn't know, to be honest. Ooh, Stormbolt, Stormbolt, Stormbolt. Orcs 90, bringing it on to the footman. It'd be lovely if we could get us around with just a footman and a mountain king, but I don't think he's going to be that fortunate. <gasps> Ooh, I thought the Death Knight was actually going to sneak in there and pick up the item, but he did manage to get the experience off the Water Elemental. 42 experience, apparently. That'll do nicely. For one Death Coil. That's okay. Not too bad. Can't complain. Removes the Water Elemental from the game as well. Not that a low health Water Elemental was going to do much, but with the Death Knight around, it means that Albert cannot, pretty, uh, cannot do much. It's a bit like when I'm in my 4 versus 4 RTs. If you know a Blade Master's nearby, it screws you over so much. Because one, you don't know they map pack. And even if they don't map pack, they can still have the kind of luck to find you. And if they're just nearby, they just have to keep tabs on you. And it's very hard to basically creep or do anything successfully without them sort of stealing the item or the kill off the creep. And then that just means that you're not getting anywhere. You don't want to give them, you don't want to enable them the ability to get an advantage over you. But you kind of already are passively by not creeping in the first place whilst they're teching up. So it's a real pain in the butt. But there you go. That's the way Warcraft 3 can be played. It's kind of flexible in that sense. You can go for the tier 1 or you can go for a tech and mostly an aggressive death knight. He has gone for fiends though. He's started to transition into those by the looks of it. There's only one fiend, is it? A few ghouls. Seems like he's missing. Maybe it's an early attack, that's why, I guess. And then Fiends. We'll see how far he is through. He's not that fur much further through than I thought. So, there you go. Who knows, eh? Who knows? Orcs are looking for the kill of a lifetime, I think. He's got the amount of footmen he needs for once around. But that's like the minimum, really, that you want. And even then, one of those footies is kind of low health. Albert's actually creeping the orange spot over here because he knows that Granty is elsewhere and I suppose Granty's allowing him to have this. Otherwise he would normally be up here, you could assume. 
Orcs 90 moving down to his undead buddy's base, maybe? No? He's going to try the orange spot. I would suggest some militia if you're going to do that. Otherwise, you might end up losing more footmen than you want to. He's deciding. He's like, mm, do I, don't I? I don't know. But Granty is getting his fiends picked apart. The panda certainly can't heal him up. So, FU is kind of going for the right approach here. He can even get a surround almost there on the panda. He almost had that. Be like a two-man surround, potentially. Which is the ogre on the other side. So, we've got... Orcs, is he deciding to go for this? He's going back and forth. He just hasn't made up his mind yet. We'll come back to him soon. But it's between Granty and Fu, who are basically trying to get the creeps. Or get the kill on the creeps. Both players contesting for it, and it looks like Fu managed to sneakily pick up the item very quickly there. The claws of attack. Oh, he's so close to getting a surround, but he's got so much mana. He could coil till Granty's panda is dead anyway, even at level 1. So he'd be fine. And it does look like Orcs wanted to go for this. And there's no militia being used. But he's doing okay, actually. It's not going as badly as it could do. The turtle's a bit of a pain in the butt. Especially if you don't know what it does. Which is basically go for your weakest unit. It's got the highest priority to do that. So you basically have to. Even if you try to micro first it. It will go back onto the weakest unit. Orcs definitely needs to tech. Or move on. But he's obviously busy with this creep camp right now. And then when he gets the chance, he's probably going to be able to macro a little better. But for the time being, Albert and Granty are now pushing onto this spot here, this shop. If they get the kill on the ogre and then use the rune that he drops, they get fission. And let's see, they get all this fission here. It's a really good spot, which is... This map is broken for that kind of stuff. The rune of the Watcher shouldn't exist. It isn't in any other maps, and there's a good reason for it. But it exists in Turtle Rock, and it's broken as high hell. It's a nice touch runes, but the thing lasts forever. If it lasted the same time as a Sentry Ward, that's that's still pretty damn strong. But it's invulnerable, and it's permanent. So it means they have permanent fission of this whole area, which is a really key area to have fission of. And if you've got either side, then all you have to do is pretty much keep an eye in the middle, and you know where your enemy is at all times. It's very unlikely they're going to go all the way around here, and if they do, that's going to take them a long time, and it's going to be easier to keep tracking them anyway. So Grandi and Albert are definitely creeping. They're not very high level heroes, but they're creeping quite consistently. Which Orcs, I believe, he's almost up to level 3 in his Mountain King, but he's kind of running out of things to creep. There's only this orange spot here, and that's not safe. So he's not moving there. I'm keeping an eye on you. What is going on in your head? You're just deciding. He's definitely working this out on the fly. There's no doubt about it. I don't think Stormbolt is going to bother the panda too much, to be honest. There's a lot of rifles being queued. You don't want that. You want to be building those rifles at the start, nice and early, so that well, you don't have to queue. Or if you are going to queue, then maybe get a second Rax. That's my suggestion. But that's alright. It's okay. It's a bad map. It's not your fault. So, we've got you looking for the opportunity to maybe pick on the turtles, keep their attention. The statues are out. That's a very nice touch. That's going to be very good for team fights. Albert's gone. He's uh, spell breakers casters. Surprise, surprise. Didn't see that one coming, did you? So, Mountain King's kind of a nice threat here. He's a bit of an initiator, and he can also be a closer. So, see things like that, he could potentially get us around here, and that's almost one, that could potentially be a dead pit lord just because of one storm bolt, pretty much. That's a pretty sealed deal. Certainly it does help to have the Mountain King, especially in team fights as well, because it allows you to get that bit more extra DPS on a target. Ooh, who's going to pick up the items? They're all blocked, the skeletons are blocking Granny's path, and the Lich is going to nab them. Scroll of the Beast is pretty handy, especially on this situation right now. If you threw that down and then went back into attacking, it could be useful, but they might choose to actually back out of this fight, depending on how it's going. There's double pounders here, throwing down quite a lot of breath of fires and a bit of drunken haze. It's not a comfortable fight, but those pounders will run out of mana soon, and they're even dying. So actually, FU's doing quite a good job here. He's staying in there. Orcs supporting him nicely. The Mountain King is in a bit of trouble, though. Can he get it back before it dies? One more hit from the Archmage does the trick. I did wonder whether the Archmage was going to get it. He's literally if he was that much further behind he wouldn't have got it. 
Now the panda has been surrounded a little bit, protected, and he's still alive. He's the only panda left, unless Grant is going to buy his panda back. He does indeed, as you can see. Making that move, and the Mountain King comes back as well. This is actually quite awesome. Everyone's just dying and then coming back into the fight. This is one heck of a fight, but it does look like Orcs and Fu have pretty much sealed the deal here. Albert's still in there though. He's got his spell break. It's nice solid units, and the Panda goes down. Another Panda dying. Death to the Pandas. The Chinese won't like this one bit. That's for sure. The Orcs has got his Mountain King. It's nice. It's nice. It's 372 health. You know, it looks like it's a lot lower health than it is, but that could still take a good hit. A good couple of coils. You know? Because of the prep to vitality. It's very nice. He doesn't understand that I cannot reply to him since I'm actually an observer, and observers cannot communicate with players. Not to mention they cannot whisper people that whisper them back either. So I may as well just not say anything, which is why I don't say anything. It's just a lot easier for me. And we got priests. So Albert's got a nice safe setup here. He's not choosing to go for the sorceress imbalance route. And Grant is going for banshees. I like that little touch. We'll see how that plays out. Bit of anti magic shield could be nice. Could be nice indeed. We've got a few finishing off this last pesky troll. It's almost like unfinished business there. Didn't need to kill it. But he just had to because there was that whole fight around here earlier. And it's it's the principle really that counts. So both teams still have, you know, a decent army each, really. We'll look into that in a bit more detail. We just want to cover this. I didn't actually spot this at the time, but Albert's had this expansion. I would have to say quite a while. It's got a good 1,200 gold from it by the looks of it. These don't have many... I mean, there's only 10,000 gold in there. Expansions on the actual edge. Don't know if that's for balance purposes. You'd almost wonder why it isn't higher. Because it's a red spot, but... Eh. It is what it is. Statues. Doing a nice job healing up. But one of them is getting kind of low on the health. Runa healing is going to help a lot. And we're going to look at the army size. So... Fu, he's got his level four death knight, level three lich, level two dark ranger, a couple of statues, and the rest fiends sitting on fifty food. Orcs ninety. I'm not sure where he's gone. Is he up here? No. Is he just? Oh, he's in his base. He is in his base. Thirty-two out of forty food or so. Level three mountain king, one priest, one sork, and a few rifles, mildly upgraded. At best. And we've got Albert on 56 food, so he's broken through. Because he has got the expansion, he's choosing to break through. Because they're obviously making a push here by going past that 50 food barrier, which means he's going to be taxed about 70%, uh, really 30%, actually. That depends, depends how you look at it. Anyway, Spellbreaker's Priest for the boy, and Grant, he's got his Panda and Pit Lord and Banshees and Fiends, and he's sitting on 50 food. So, mm, I'd say obviously Albert and Granty had the larger army here, and it's not a bad army really. Spell breakers are an absolute pain in two versus two. They really are. So they're a very strong unit. Fu's just deciding to try and creep as much as he possibly can. Orcs 90 can't take on two players. He's just not. He's got the lowest army size as well. So the best thing he can do is just carry on running. Now the banshees are sitting on a depth. Are they researching tier three? No, they can't. Looks like fuck you. <laughs> I'm just gonna end up saying that eventually. There's almost no way. It's gonna force a TP. It's pretty much what I was trying to get to. Force a TP. Get back himself. Grant has gone back. Albert's now here. Two more skeletons moving up. An arcane tower almost finished. That's going to help first is those skeletons. Orcs 90 may be moving up to this top bit as well to get a few hits. And Albert's going to spot this expansion. I think the farm spotted it. Well placed farm. Skeletons still being a pest despite the arcane tower. But it won't last much longer. About 30 damage per hit there. That's pretty impressive. And there is Orcs. And hopefully that Arcane Tower doesn't switch onto his Mountain King. Otherwise that's going to be a sad Mountain King. Or it does, but the Arcane Tower goes down very fast. Luckily Orcs does have himself a TP. Which he's going to need to use by the looks of it. Because he's in a very Orc position. He could potentially run out of this. But is it worth it? Running down is certainly not the right way to go. I would have gone up and then left personally myself. But the TP does get used. And FU now has a Frostworm to add to his collection. 
And the destroyers have been made. Are there any statues left? No. They are... All of those statues are gone. They're gone. Never to come back unless that slaughterhouse starts swinging around again. Now, Albert is not in the best position. I'd definitely say that FU is in a stronger position here. Depends how fast Granty can react and TP over. He is TPing over now. Is he going to be able to get into a good position and help Albert from dying? Anti-Magic Shield is going to be lovely, to be quite frank with you. Albert actually TP'd out. I don't know whether he did that as a reactionary thing. I didn't realize Granty was TPing in, but that could have been pretty awkward for Granty if they chose to go back. FU almost chasing him down. Maybe he's going to wait and get himself another scroll or something. He's getting close to that point. Looks like Orcs is moving in here with the fellow Destroyers and the Mountain King's going to go up another level. That's pretty nice touch. And they're actually in a really good position here because this base is wide open now. They could basically kill it if they wanted to, but if they had to fight, they've got the largest space area whilst Granty and Albert are moving through a slight choke point here. This is pretty much the position that FU and Grant, uh, Orcs want. Panda is in a bit of trouble. He might have that anti-magic shield, but he's not going to last much longer, I'm telling you. See that? Down he goes. Now the invulnerability pot has been used for the paladin. Uh, I wonder if what I call that a paladin. I guess because of the definity shield. That's what I was making a, rela a relation to. But the death knight's actually not in as much trouble as I thought he might be. I thought he might be forced into a situation where he needs to TP out there. Orcs is up on the top side. It looks like FU is on the bottom side. I'd still say that Albert and Granty are basically dominating this situation in particular. They might not win the overall game. I don't know. But it certainly looks like they've got a hell of a lot. Doesn't look like they've been punished that much. FU's going to be pushing ahead though because he's getting a lot of hero kills. There's no doubt about that. So I think that's pretty much what he's trying to go for. Is he's trying to get to the point where he can be almost unstoppable with just his heroes alone. Orcs needs to TP out. He's not going to be able to do it in time. So that's him gone. Maybe he chose not to TP out because he wanted to stay in the fight to help support FU. But I think FU's going to need to back off soon anyway. This isn't a comfortable fight. There's so many spell breakers out and about. And I don't think there's much mana left for the heroes. Well, that fight went very well for Granty and Albert. Mostly because they have a pretty safe combination. It's pretty strong. Can be overpowered, though, if FU can get those heroes any more powerful, like level 5, level 4, level 4, so and so. You know, once he can get to that point, he just needs to concentrate on picking off units at this point. This isn't a good fight for him. He definitely needs to back off. There's nothing to gain here unless you can pick off units like Granty's uh, Banshees. Would have been a lovely touch there. Could have definitely turned around, picked off a few there, get the level 5 Death Knight that he definitely wants. Or uh, Abominations coming in here. That's going to be good against the spell breakers. Not so good against a potential possession, which doesn't exist right now, because it looks like Granty doesn't want to go down that road, but he certainly could do it if he wanted to. Abomination out here for Granty as well. That's going to be nice. Just to help support. The rest of the army is always good to have one or two abominations. I do like it. And Albert does get to keep his expansion, which is now almost 4,000 gold mines. So that's 4,000 gold gained from that, which basically orcs and a few didn't manage to get because I don't think they managed to get a, an expansion for very long. They might have had one for a very short while, but not too long. Albert's got two workshops out here. That would be lovely. But he definitely needs the wood in order to actually make any use out of it. And he can't get any from Granty because he almost has less wood. Yes, he does. So, these two are moving as one, basically. It's very hard to intercept this army. How would you intercept that army? You want a bunch of Tauren is what you'd want. And even then, the Banshees are a threat. Not a complete threat because they haven't got possession, but they could be. I assume a TP is going to go down because they're not going to want FU, sorry, to stand around in their base. Are they both going to TP or just one? Granty hasn't actually got much here. So if FU chose to maybe turn around again and try to pick off a couple of units, it's not easy fighting in an undead base, but he certainly could. 
town is under it's almost like he's only hope really yes he kind of does have to go back there's not much option for him unless he wants to run over to the human base there's a few ghouls there a nice little f well, I was going to say frost over yeah He's going to choose to use that on the panda instead. Who's going to go down very swiftly because of the orb of corruption. Teleport does save his life. But maybe FU could come back in and finish off the panda with another coil on Nova. But he's forced to go back because now Albert's TPing in. And this is going to be too much for him to take on. He's going to be forced to use a TP because it's not too comfortable to run away from that situation. It's maybe possible but kind of unlikely that he'll get away worthwhile. Orcs now moving up, seeing his opportunity to take out this expansion unless another TP has been bought, which I assume it may have done. Uh, Granty's got one. So if Orcs can kill this expansion before Granty can get there in time with his teleport, that'll be nice. I don't know. Granty does have the option to teleport over, but is he going to choose to use that ability? We don't know. If you definitely... He needs a little bit more. He needs a little bit more in terms of, you know, just building up that Death Knight just a little bit more. He's so close to level 5, but if he gets like a level 3 Death Coil, that's going to do wonders for him. Unfortunately, Orcs is going to be denied the kill on this expansion. The peasants coming in are plentiful and can repair that up very comfortably. And he's just going to be forced to run away. But I do like the Spellbreakers. This is what we need to see. But if you're going to go for Spellbreakers, try to go Defense. Because they're m I don't particularly envision Spellbreakers as an aggressive unit. They're a very safe unit. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with getting attacked for them. But I don't get them for attack myself. I get them to wind the enemy down. To, you know, to... Dr to draw out their mana, to just tank it up a little bit whilst the rest of your units, maybe rifles or casters and heroes, do the actual damage themselves. It's not like you have super damage from Spellbreakers anyway, even if you do upgrade them. They're okay. I mean, they're a very good unit. Don't get me wrong, they're well worth their weight in gold. But I wouldn't envision them, as I say, as the DPS requirement that you need. You need to focus on other units if you want to get your DPS out. Maybe mortars. Which is why these workshops exist, but they're not being used. But mortars could be nice. Could be nice indeed. They certainly have a large enough army for mortars to sit there comfortably without being threatened too much. Perhaps by destroyers? Whatever happened to that frost one anyway? Oh, did I not catch that? I guess it just got killed. But it's a nice touch to really play around with that if you can and have the one frost worm just to slow down you don't really get it so much for the damage or just how strong it is you just pretty much get it for its frost breath now if you is looking for the opportunity to try and save this expansion but it looks really awkward and those are master banshees now finally which is going to make this even more awkward and difficult for fu to try and fight against he needs an opportunity to pick off units and the frostworm does come in so he's going for that classic one frostworm addition to his army orcs is now moving in he's got a good little angle here he's got his casters at the back there's spell breakers at the front they're moving in got to be careful for these banshees are going to take over both of those abominations that is very unfortunate but it looks like his heroes are still going strong apart from the Death Knight who has got a huge health pot to take but even then he might go down quickly unless he can get him out. He's passed over the invulnerability pot so that means that he will be able to survive that bit longer. His heroes are still very strong. Orcs hasn't got much left but he's still got a very strong hero. All heroes are still going very well for that team red and green but Albert has also still got everything he requires and Granty's a little bit less so Pitlaw going down and Panda as well so this is actually turning around on them slightly FU is just trying to buy himself as much time as he can killing out picking out what he can and he could take this potentially just with the heroes alone but it's too many spell breakers they're just they're so damn strong they're so damn good you know spell breakers are super safe but it looks like there might be another hero kill, although the Paladin's Holy Light does give that panda a little bit more chance to stay in the fight. And I should, yes, the undead heroes are unfortunately low on mana again. So they're very good up to a point. They're so stupidly good, but they have to have the mana in order to be that useful. 
and then they can get a load of free kills. And this gold mine is going to go down. That's like 7,000 gold now down. Yeah, they still got quite a lot here, army-wise. And Fe does have to lose his expansion. Level 4 Lich. That Death Knight is now level 5, so... Albert's now got this expansion over here. Hasn't had it very long, but long enough to pay off for the expansion at least. Now there's an opportunity here. This is what you really want. Is whilst Fu wasn't in a position where he could comfortably just keep harassing without drawing too much attention, because that's exactly what would happen if he did harass. But he does need this badly. Is essentially free kills. Look at his experience now. Much easier to build up your heroes when you've got a bunch of peasants to pick on rather than trying to kill spellbreakers or such, which is virtually impossible. He's going to try and go for a hit on the panda, maybe get lucky here. He could put... Uh, I don't think there's another coil. There might be another coil, actually, if he doesn't get hit by the spellbreakers anymore, but he does, so he's not going to have that extra coil to definitely finish off the panda, which could have potentially happened. He's going to have to back off here. There's nothing to get out of this anymore. Drunken Haze is very nasty. Ghoul's coming in here to do a little bit of extra damage. And the good thing about the Banshees is, is with their possession, is it can, in a way, act like ensnare. You know, if you use possession, I believe it does stun the unit. Now, it makes your Banshee take three times as much damage, but that's only if it gets attacked, obviously. So you can actually just use it to stun enemy fleeing units, potentially, and uh, then steal them. So there's not much harm in it. Albert now got the tanks. This is not what FU needs. There's no way FU can handle this. It's just too much on his plate, I think, at this point. And Orcs is also getting a raw deal. His base, he's got a kind of comfy spot here, but he just doesn't have the army size to contend with this. It's far too much. And it looks like FU has left the game, leaving Orcs to control it all and take home the win. Or will he? Albert and Granty are now moving in. The pressure is high. It's too much, but there's one thing that does need to happen is the tank needs to die. It's only got one armor, so we can take it out. Come on, Sorks on it, Priest on it, Mountain King. Get it down, Steam Tank, die. Yes, he's got this. He's got to get the Steam Tank before he goes down. That Steam Tank is still freaking strong. Mountain King's going down quicker and quicker. Oh my god, it's so close. It's between the two. Oh my god, does the Steam Tank survive? It does. Ultimate denial. 23 HP steam tank. Oh, what can you do? If he killed that steam tank, he would have been fine. Oh, well. Well, that was quite a action-packed game. Well played by all the team. And both teams. But the goal that Albert got pretty much gave them the opportunity. And the spellbreakers pretty much never dying because they're just such a safe unit. Gave him the chance to sort of push ahead and keep the pressure on without too much punishment, despite his her expansion being like almost destroyed multiple times. It wasn't enough to slow him down. So that gold just kept flowing in. You can see it's an extra like 5k gold, at least, over the other team. So it's pretty, pretty beasty amount of gold that it goes to a few extra spellbreakers. Right, thanks for watching. This has been Witty. Please subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you later.